So today I'm going to be talking about the seven deadly wastes, which is a simple tool used in process improvement to identify some waste in your process. Now waste, just like in real life, is something that we do not desire. Seven deadly wastes are just seven common types of waste that you can identify in a system and get rid of. They're called that because just like with the seven deadly sins, I think they try to make it catchy and simple. I originally made this presentation for a STEM presentation to some middle schoolers. Um, if you're unfamiliar with STEM, that's science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. It's kind of an initiative in America to educate a lot of people to become engineers and scientists. So some of these slides may seem a little basic or goofy, but the principles still apply. If you can find seven deadly wastes in a manufacturing environment, you can get rid of them. And not even just a manufacturing environment, really. Any sort of environment where a process is involved, so pretty much every job ever. If you see any one of these wastes, you can get rid of it. You don't have to see all seven of them. Maybe you just have one or two that are super prevalent where you work. Maybe you have five. Either way, learning about them now, you can identify them better in the future. So the underlying principle here is we want to make a good process. So how do we do that? We get rid of the waste. Uh, there's a phrase, an acronym called KISS. It just stands for keep it simple, stupid. Or you could say keep it simple, silly. If you don't want to be as offensive, hopefully no one would be offended. So to make things simple, you just want them to be as straightforward as possible. Simple, to the point, get the job done. Not a whole lot of waste. So look for these wastes and eliminate them. All right, so the first deadly waste I'm going to talk about is overproduction. For the middle schoolers I talked to um, about manufacturing and process improvement, I had an example where I made a peanut butter and jelly sandwich in front of them and made a lot of these mistakes. So a lot of my examples are going to involve a PB&J, which is great because it's simple and something we can all relate to. So overproduction would be, say you want a peanut butter and jelly. You really only need one, but for some reason you made two. So who are you going to give the other one to? You don't need it. Okay, so yeah, that was a dumb example, but have you ever thought about a time when you're really hungry and got too much food? Then you have to throw some of it away? That's overproduction on whoever made you the food. They overproduced because of you, your demand. If you save it, that's another thing, but that can lead to a different deadly waste as well. But think about if you get more than you need and you throw it away. That's overproduction. Another deadly waste is waiting. This is one that we're all pretty familiar with. Think about all the times that you have to wait on something. You know, at the bank, at the DMV, even at the local fast food place. It's just a waste of time. And time is money. Your time is valuable. So waiting is a waste. If you see a process where people are standing around waiting for something to get done before they can work, that's a waste. That's waiting. Try to eliminate waiting. Another deadly waste is transport. Although transport is essential for a lot of industries and it's very needed, you can think about it on a large scale or even a small scale. So think about when you wake up in the morning. Where are your clothes? Are they right near your bed? Say they're across the room. Think about all that walking you have to do. Thinking about right when you wake up is a good example because you're usually pretty tired. So you really notice that walk you have to do. Sure, physically walking is exercise, but if you have to walk all the way to the corner of your room just to get dressed, or do a lot of back and forth walking, that's the waste of transport. Another deadly waste is motion. So think about if you're making a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, or any kind of sandwich, and you're waving your arms around all crazy, and you're doing kung fu. You don't need to do that to make a sandwich. This would be like tying a double knot when you're tying your shoes or doing some crazy hair braid or something. If you're just trying to put your shoes on or put your hair up, you don't have to get fancy. You don't need to waste all this motion. It takes time, it takes energy. You don't need to spend it. Be efficient with your processes. Overprocessing is another deadly waste. Think back to my peanut butter and jelly example. If I'm making a PB&J and I put a lot of effort into taking the crumbs off the top of the bread, that's overprocessing. 
there's really no reason I need to do that. Or if you have a recipe that says add tomato halves and you slice the tomato into multiple pieces, that's just extra work you don't need to do. As consumers, we like overprocessing sometimes. Think about if you take your car somewhere to get it washed manually, so a couple people are washing your car, and they actually vacuum out the inside of your car, even though it's not part of washing your car off. We like this, but from their point of view, if they're not advertising that as part of the cost, they're overprocessing. So that might make you happy, but it's additional to what they said they were going to be doing. So maybe in your life, you're writing reports, or you're turning something into your boss, and you're formatting it a certain way, or you're making it look really artistic, or you're putting it in a special envelope, something like that, and your boss doesn't even care. You are over-processing. That's wasting your time. It's wasting the company's money. So try not to over-process. Inventory is another deadly waste. This is one that a lot of people like to do in their own lives, and it works decently, but think about it for a larger company, or manufacturing specifically. Say I wanted to make just one PB&J, but I bought 20 loaves of bread. That would be crazy. That would be the waste of inventory, because I'd have all this extra bread. Maybe you buy products in bulk, and that's okay as an individual, because if they don't expire and you have the room for them, so be it. You're already paying for where you live anyway. But from a company point of view, this costs extra money. The company needs a roof to put these parts under. They need lights and air conditioning. And sometimes they even need someone to watch over and document the inventory. All that extra effort costs money. So what happens if they don't need the inventory anymore? Now it's just a waste. Maybe they can sell it back at a discount price, but they'd be losing money because they would have bought it for more than they sold it back for. So one thought process in manufacturing to get around inventory is called just-in-time. That's a whole other topic, but just-in-time pretty much means you get your inventory right when you need it because you don't want to spend the money to keep it in a warehouse. You only need it right when you're going to use it. There's you know, practical limits to this in real life. But ideally, you don't want tons of inventory. You just don't need it. A good example of this in real life would be, say you have a girl who's going on a trip. She's packing for a trip. And she brought 25 shirts just for a three-day trip. She would have to carry this huge suitcase around just because she wanted all those shirts with her. That's inventory. That's way too much inventory. Even if she wears four or five shirts, all those other shirts are not doing anything for her. So now we're to our last deadly waste. And keep in mind, there's a lot more types of waste out there. These are just seven of the more common ones that people like to group together. This one is my favorite, just because I was a quality engineer for a while. So I got to deal with a lot of issues firsthand. So if you've read the slide or listened to me talk, you can guess. This last deadly waste is defects. Parts that are not made the way they should be. It's my favorite category because if you look at it with a comical point of view, mistakes can be funny, but it's bad for a company. Material, labor, overhead, all these things were involved in making a part. And if that part's bad and can't be repaired, it's waste. Even if it can be repaired, that's extra money you didn't need to spend in the first place. So here's some pictures that I just like to laugh at, but they're all defects. You have a toilet seat and toilet cover in the wrong order, so it's not practical. You have a laptop of some sort where the mouse pad and the keyboard are switched, which would make it very difficult to use that computer. Then you have a street sign or a street painting, road painting, that should say stop, but they spelled it wrong. All these things are not usable, or if they are, they don't function well, and they're probably going to get returned. They all involved wasted material, wasted time, wasted labor. They're all just wastes. Just like all of these examples have been waste of some sort, whether it's a physical waste, a material waste, a time waste, you do not want these seven deadly wastes in your processes. So now that you know about them and know some examples, 
Keep an eye out where you work and see if you can eliminate some of these seven deadly wastes. Thanks for watching.